Hello, welcome to Simcha, a celebration of life. I'm Nikki Wallman. Spanish Jews once constituted one of the largest and most prosperous Jewish communities under Christian and Muslim rule in Spain. But during the Spanish Inquisition of 1492, the majority of them were forced to convert to Christianity, be expelled from their homeland, or be killed. Some 200,000 Jews converted to Christianity, but continued to practice their Judaism in secret. Today, there are a number of Spanish families who have continued their family's traditions not knowing that their ancestors were in fact Jewish and subsequently wanting to convert back to Judaism. Most of the people that become Christian, they were the high-level people. Even the, the chief rabbi of uh, Spain became Christian. But 300 years after, beneath his castle, they found a synagogue that worked for 300 years. It's unbelievable. So this phenomenon of people who keep to the tradition. It was really scary to, to act like, uh, like a Jew in, in, at the time. We have to understand because till now they are still afraid. Till now they do things, you know, for hundreds of years of, of, uh, of, of afraid from, from the Christian still in their blood. In Sefarad, there is a movement of the despertar de conciencia judía, muy fuerte, imparable, que o es un virus que nos está enloqueciendo o es una señal de que la, la identidad judía que se perdió a lo largo de los siglos desde los progroms de 1391 y la expulsión 1492 eh, quiere volver a su cauce. About one year ago, I start to feel very bad physically all kind of shaking at night, and uh, I went to doctors, I went to a uh, sleep laboratory. Uh, they didn't find anything. Then a friend of mine, a rabbi from uh, Tzfat, is calling me. He told me, you know, seven years ago, you started to write a book. The book is a book of your grand-grand-grandfather from Spain, and you, f you didn't finish the book. And the soul of your grand-grandfather is now angry at you, and this is why all this thing happened to you. You know, I was standing there and I lift my hand and I say, Grandpa, if you're so angry, I'm, I'm going back to the book, because it was true. My family name is Armoni, but Armoni is the Hebrew pronunciation for Castel. And this Mikubal, his name was Rabbi Yosef El Castil from Spain. So I figured out it's probably my grandfather. During my research, we encountered to one um, organization in Spain. This organization is uh, belong to an Argentinian professor that moved from uh, from Argentina to to Spain, and is uh, is is Jewish. Mario Saban, his name. And they offered him to open a, a faculty in the, in the Larida University, like uh, Jewish studies. The first year, 150 students uh, sign up. He was surprised, you know, who are you? Why do you want to, to sign up to such a course? Many of them told him that uh, they are descendants of uh, Jewish, uh, parents or grandparents, and many say that their grand grandfather, before he died, told them, uh, "You are Jewish, and you have to to keep the the light on, and so on." And they want to know about the, the Judaism. And I told him about the the research and the book that I write, and uh, he invited me to come to to Spain. So we went to Spain. 
And uh, we met the many families, many families that want to become Jewish. Yo vivo como judía. No necesito que nadie me diga ya eres o no eres. Sé que soy judía. Sé que vivo como judía. Solo voy a necesitar el permiso para una cosa. Para morir como judía, no, para ser enterrada como judía. Y de esta manera, cerrar, cerrar este círculo absurdo de siglos, de pérdida de identidad y de pérdida de una riqueza impresionante en manos de unos desarmados. I saw a lot of uh, people, uh, women, that are lighting uh, Shabbat candles, but they are, they are, they are lighting the, the Shabbat candles in, inside the cupboard, not, uh, not outside, but inside the cupboard. Uh, we saw a separation between meat and, uh, and milk. We found a person who had uh, a part of the Torah. He told me that his, his uh, grandfather used to hold it and uh, and sleep on it and cry over it at night. When I opened it, I saw part of uh, Parashat Naso in, uh, in Bamidbar. The rabbi that I was talking about him before, he told me, when you finish the book, something great will happen. So I finished the book in Pamplona, and they called me and told me, you know, we have a surprise for you tomorrow. Be ready in the morning. We are going to take you to a trip. And they, they took me to the city where my grandfather was living. This uh, city called uh, Shatiba. It's uh, not so far from Valencia. And we drove to there. And uh, they brought somebody to, give, to, to explain us around. He told me, listen, they destroy everything. Nothing is left. I said, where, where, where was the synagogue? So they said, uh, all the synagogues were destroyed, and instead of the synagogue, there's churches. I told him, take me to one of those churches. He took me to one of them. I was going behind, and I found a mikveh. And he told me, you know, there's a hole on the top of the, of the hill that water from the rain coming into the, to the well down. I said, yes, it's a mikveh. And for me, it was like kind of everything we, we, we picture, and, it was a really strange feeling to, to, to see like uh, the connection between you know people who already is not in this world for 500 years and us that we are here. phenomenon of the lost Spanish Jewry and bringing them back to Israel has been a lifelong passion of Rabbi Armoni, completing the circle of his connection to his ancestry. There's already a radio station of the Benanusim. They uh, become like uh, communities, they know each other through the internet, they chatting with, uh, with uh, each other through the internet. They study a lot of uh, Judaism and custom, and they study through the internet. So I think this helped, that helped the, this phenomenon to rise now, and uh, we are now uh, writing um, a newspaper once uh, in two weeks, three weeks, and we have spread them in, their, uh, in, in the communities of the descendants of the Anusim all over. And, you know, when we succeed to, with some families, I'm sure that many, many uh, families will, uh, will join the, uh, this idea. We try to do everything uh, with accepted uh, conversion in Israel, and we always also believe that uh, all those people who are converted for them should come to Israel. We believe that uh, uh, outside of Israel is now one generation Jew. Uh, we don't believe that uh, this can have any uh, continuation. We want them to come to Israel because, as I say, 
Part of the, the, the idea that I want to do this thing is that I want that in Israel will be more than 7 million Jewish people soon. Because this is part of the redemption, this is part of the Gula. Beside the dust of Zion, all the good of Spain is light, and a light thing to leave it. And if it is now only a land of howling beasts and owls, was it not so when given to our fathers? All of it only a heritage of thorns and thistles? But they walked in it, his name in their hearts, sustenance as in a park among flowers. In the midst of the sea, when the hills of it slide and sink, and the wind lifts the water like sheaves. Well, that brings us to the end of this week's show. Thank you so much for being with us, and please join us again same time next week. We'd love to hear from you, so find us on Facebook at Spirit Sister Productions Network. As always, from me, Nikki, and the team, shalom and have a safe and peaceful week. Mm -hmm.